Hi, everyone, and welcome to Open Class. As you see, we have a guest today. Welcome, Rucha. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Me too. Um, and so for those in the audience who don't know you, which probably is most people because this is the first time you're here, um, just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up here. Yeah, uh, my name is Rucha Bot, and uh, I am also a sleep coach. And uh, I um, help people get better sleep. And, you know, I, I had a journey of overcoming insomnia. And, um, and I, was, I felt so inspired of, you know, getting to a place where I could sleep and do it without struggle, you know. And so that led me here. And I, I wanted to learn more. And, and so I did. And so here I am. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. And and so, yeah, just to, for those who, and be, before, so I know, of course, that you, you were one of our early graduates from the sleep coach school, but did you have, like, were you coaching before that or it's, it, that's how you became a coach, so to speak? So, you no, know, I was doing health coaching, which is general, like general health coaching. Um, and then I really kind of narrowed my focus uh, around sleep. And I could really relate to that because I had been on my own journey. And, and I was also very, just very interested of the, how all of that works, how sleep works and the, you know, and so then I just, then I found you, you know, actually you came through a referral. So, um, and I said, let me, let me get more focus. Let me learn more. And, and, you know, it's been great. It's just, really opened my eyes. Absolutely. I think it actually, you probably, you maybe know Martin Reed, insomnia coach, Martin Reed. He, he's a health coach too. That's his background. And he always talks about how it's, it's easier when you narrow down on something, like you're focused on something people, you know, it's yeah. easier for people to see like, Oh, this, this is exactly what I need help with, etc. Yeah. Now remind me like, uh, when you had, you know, trouble sleeping yourself, uh, actually let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Like what, what happened and then how did you find you, uh, you know, how do you leave the struggle, if you will? Um, well, you know, mine started, mine started back in college when I graduated. And um, that was sort of kind of precipitated the whole thing. And, um, you know, and then the loss of sleep then led me to like worrying about sleep and thinking about sleep and trying to plan everything around it. It was a lot of preoccupation. So now when I look back, you know, there was there was too much. It was too much. And then, you know, the more I worried about it and thought about it, it just kind of made it worse. You know, I just kept it going in a way. And I didn't I wasn't really aware of what I was doing, you know, I wasn't aware, but now I can look back and say, yeah, that was it. That was the, that was a big thing, you know, was that. Yeah. And you were doing, and you just, you know, for the audience here, you were, I'm guessing you're doing things like, you know, making sure you maybe went to bed at the same time, not too much lie, sleep hygiene, like those type of things. Or what, what were the things that you were doing then that you realized that was a little bit too much? Yeah, yeah, it was it was an over focus on sleep hygiene. It was an over focus on that. It 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 kind of does the opposite. You know, we think like sleep hygiene, we just get it better and find more things, but no, no more things. So um very eye-opening, you know. And when I was going through your course and understanding, I was like, oh wow, that's I was doing all of that stuff. I was doing all of that stuff. But yeah, it it really is taking the focus off of that because that's not it. It's a. It's in the mind, right? It's in the mind, and it's that worry and, and just thinking about it and wondering about it, planning it, and you know all of that. Hundred percent. And and like for you, what was it that led you to to see that? Oh, what what led you towards like because the course you took was really like to become a sleep coach, right? And that's when you saw all these things. But before that, you were already sleeping better. I'm guessing, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what helped you to reach that point? Yeah, I, um, so I, back then I was seeing a psychologist. Um, I mean, I wish there was a sleep coach because that would have really honed in on that. And it's that sort of, um, and although she didn't talk in the way that we learned in sleep coaching, um, you know, that sort of 
letting go and, and and distracting the brain and and just you know but i had to get to a place where i did feel safe at being awake you know so we went about it in a roundabout way if that makes sense yes 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 i can see that like a you know how a psychologist can be very kind of knowledgeable and comfortable when it comes to kind of like fear and anxiety and, and that can help but it but it could have been more effective probably if they fully understood sleep etc yeah i can see that i think it would have nipped it in the bud faster because i did have anxiety but i also had sleep anxiety too exactly so both yeah totally okay now so this is very clear and so before and by the way this is open class everybody tuning in we will we will ask some questions together of course but um before we do that now you have a facebook group um, and, and that you run, and I know you've had some clients uh, that you've been working with, and, and that's mainly, that's how you do your, tell, tell me a little bit more about your program and how you do your sleep coaching. Yeah, so I have a Facebook group, um, uh, Sleep Plus Health Plus Pro Productivity Secrets. So, um, you know, my clientele base is, you know, is, is in that, is in that group. Um, but you know, we um, I have two I, I have two programs basically. One is insomnia, um, uh, transforming insomnia, and then the other one is more just um, people who don't have insomnia but they just want to improve their habits. So I am taking clients. I am taking more clients. So hey, reach out to me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and now it's funny we were just talking about this before this episode, like. Uh, how people will find you, but I told I told you Ruha that uh, Rucha that um, if you have a link, I'll put it in the description. So yes, so we, we already have some live comments actually. Let's take a look. Um, Daniel says Rucha is talking exactly what is going through last month. Amazing! You just helped <laughs> Daniel here see that they're going through the exact same. This thanks yeah. for sharing, Daniel. That's amazing. Jake says, things are going a lot better for me now. I'm no longer afraid of wakefulness tonight. Thank you. Anytime. Super glad to hear that. Yeah. Cool. That was a nice start to this, uh, this episode. Now, let's get, let's get into it. So we have, I picked three questions from the community. First one is from Lynn. She says, hi, Daniel. I'm enjoying your channel so much. Glad to hear. My main problem now seems to be that I consistently wake up at five each morning. This has been happening for, for months. My sleep time is around 11, 30, 12, but I always wake up before dawn every morning. I stay in bed, happy and relaxed, but I am awake. I just wish I could get a little more sleep. Would appreciate any suggestions, many thanks. So yeah, I can start on this one and then over to you, Rucha. Uh, so um, my thought here is like, it, it's very common actually to have this, like I call them Swiss awakenings. Like when you like you wake up sort of the exact same time, regardless of when you slept or not. And to me, one of the key things is seeing that when you wake up and you kind of check what time it is, then it's kind of it's sort of like it creates this memory, if you will, in the brain that oh, something important happens at five o'clock, and therefore I should be awake at five o'clock. And then you wake up at five o'clock again. Then you check that it is five o'clock, and then you reinforce it, and it happens over and over again. And so I think a kind of simple thing here is like just not know what time it is. You wake up and you, you can have an alarm for six or seven or whenever you usually get up, but you don't check the time and you don't know it's five. And then the, it, it all gets more fuzzy. Then the brain isn't like looking for five. You stop knowing what time it is. And you can uh, also, it's good that you can, you can just enjoy that wakefulness, do something you like, but making it more fuzzy, I think is kind of the number one thing I, I, concretely can add to this but uh when you hear this uh, uh Rucha, what what are your thoughts um yeah it's kind of similar to that daniel actually you know the, the whole time thing i think we we are so oriented to time especially during the day we just want to look at time and that kind of has a tendency to go into the night and we're like oh i gotta look at the time because we're in this habit of looking at the time and i say you know just just forget about the time right just turn the clock around um, and just enjoy that time that you're in your bed, you know, at five, you can read, you can just enjoy it and not even know, no, don't know the time. It's, it's good. It's all Absolutely. good. And, and you know, I reflected upon that and a little sidetrack here, but at some point I just reflected upon this, that if somebody would like ping me at a, any random moment during the day and say like, Daniel, what time it is? I probably would know within like five, 10 minutes, which just shows how we are so like aware of time all the time, which yeah. I do, it does create problems, I believe. <laughs> right not only yeah anyway and one thing that i want to add 
to this one is just the last, I think the last um, sentence here, let me put it back here. The last sentence showed something that I think is important, which is, um, I just wish I could get a little more sleep, you know, which is of course so natural, like who doesn't want that? But then again, it shows that when you're in bed and you're like, I just wish I could get a little more, that's actually what keeping you from sleeping a little more, right? Mm -hmm. So um, just and just being aware of that when your brain goes like, I wish I could sleep some more, and I'm like, aha, uh -huh, this is why I'm not sleeping some more. Just being aware of that I think could could really help. Um, and uh, yeah, that that was a little extra thought. Do you, do you agree? Any any extra additional things on that one? I was gonna say, you know, that desiring that oh, I really want that 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 kind of it has like a little sense of pressure, subtle pressure on ourselves. And then our brains are like, oh, I'm going to be more awake now. You know, it just, it does the opposite as opposed to just being like, oh, well, it is what it is right now. And that's okay. You know, sort of like, like letting go part of that, you know, hundred yeah. percent. Totally agree. All right. Perfect. So let's head over to our next one, which is from Kenny. So Kenny says, I suddenly had a night without sleep about two weeks ago. And ever since then, I've gotten zero deep sleep. Don't feel tired and have a fast heart rate and it's starting to freak me out. Any help would be nice. I want to say, uh, as I should have from the very beginning here, that nothing here is medical advice, you know, just, just general thoughts and, and uh, so forth. Uh, but uh, so we have Kenny here who for two weeks now hasn't really slept deeply and but doesn't feel tired uh experiencing some like oh, fast heart rate like uh, what are you when you just hear this picture which is you know we don't have much detail but this just overall picture rucha what what are your immediate thoughts when you hear this yeah i i feel like this is more of that hyper aroused state you know that the heart racing the very alertness very wide awake um and so that's kind of making it hard to sleep and because um, you haven't slept, you know, two weeks ago that, that it's in the mind, right? It's in the mind. And it's just, it's like, oh, am I going to sleep? Am I not? And then the mind races and the heart goes up. And so we can feel that in our bodies. Yeah, to totally. I think hyper also uh, is really at, at the core of everything. Like, you know, being awake, the palpitations, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if we, if someone, someone like Kenny, like in the situation, uh, were to ask for like, okay, what should I do in this situation? Um, I get my go-to would probably be like education, but what are your th immediate things? Like what, what, what are your thoughts for someone like Kenny? Well, if, when you're finding yourself awake in the middle of the night, I, I would just, I would just get up. If you can get out of bed, go, go do something fun that you enjoy. Just take your mind away from sleep. You want to do the opposite. And it sounds like paradoxical, and it is, but it works because our brains love that, doesn't want to feel pressure. And what, what you're going to find is that sleep is going to start coming to you. Let me tell you, like, I, I even have nights like this sometimes, and I just go do something fun. I don't even, you know, and then all of a sudden, I'm just like feeling sleepy again, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> that, you know, oftentimes, like, that easy thing can be so helpful. and. Mm -hmm. One other thing, um, I actually maybe two other things here was one was like, I am not sleeping. I don't have deep sleep, but I don't feel tired, which I think we kind of already talked about, which is that hyper arousal, when you're in that state of like kind of alertness, you, you don't feel sleepy, you can kind of mask it. But that can be good to know because for a lot of people, it's kind of like almost scary, like what's going on? I, I am not sleeping much and I don't feel tired. Like not feeling tired can almost be a little scary. So that's one that we kind of covered uh, already and then it comes to the other thing which is like the deep the deep sleep concept like when i hear that when somebody says like i'm just just not getting deep sleep it can mean like two things one some people think of that like the 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 sleep stage called deep sleep and the other one can be like i just don't feel refreshed and i guess when it comes to kenny here um i would guess it's more like I'm guessing what's happened when it comes to Kenny is that he just doesn't feel like sleep is deep, that he senses that it's superficial uh, all night, um, which we kind of already talked about too. So I guess this was maybe just a little comment, but 
Anything, anything to add to that, like the deep, deep sleep thoughts there, Rucha? You know, I, I think, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think that when we are, our brains are going and our, and our pulse is up, that maybe we stay at that lighter stage of sleep. We cannot delve into the deep sleep because we're just too wired or hyper aroused. And so I think that's where that feeling is coming from. You know, I, I can't get into deep because the hyper arousal keeps us up here at the superficial light sleep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's, I think also there's really no mystery to that one either. Uh, but the experience can be sort of like, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, I have these weird dreams, bizarre yeah. dreams. And like I wake yeah. up all the time, that's hyper arousal again, like infusing mm -hmm. itself into sleep. So. Yeah, you know, I remember mine being like that too. Just yeah. a lot of vivid dreams, light sleep. I'm like, where's my deep sleep? Where is that? So I can really, I can really relate to that. Yeah. So very well, and I think if for you know Kenny here and anyone that um, if, uh, recognizes this, I would just say learning too is so important. Like just spend some time on this channel, learn, and and when the mystery, the mystery sort of resolves, then the hype arousal goes down. Everything becomes much easier and, and, and more peaceful. Okay, let's take a look. We have one more question to go over. And this is from Grace. This is actually a very common one. Grace says, hi, Daniel. I started implementing sleep restriction and after one brutal week, I had six nights of near perfect, all caps, perfect sleep. I was sleeping about seven hours per night and it was amazing. Now, all of a sudden, I've just had two terrible nights, about three hours each. How could I? How could I regress this badly after such a great week? Is this a sign that the techniques aren't going to work for me? This is, yeah, very common kind of theme here, thematic mm -hmm. one. But yeah, Rucha, when you hear this, what are your immediate thoughts? You know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like speed bump a little bit, you know, like it's going good. And then we just had two nights and I say, you know, just ride through it. It's just a speed bump. Don't give it any attention, you know, and just go, okay, and keep going. Because then if we pay too much attention, sometimes that can give us a little bit more speed bump. So it's, I think it's part of the normal process, I think, and, and going along, that you're going to hit these little bumps. Absolutely. I think that it's very true. And it's kind of like that, uh, one of my favorite analogies of hiking, that like when you you stumble over a rock or something, and then you stay like, why is this rock here? Why can't I move it? Why am I, like, then you're at the rock, and you, if you kind of like just move forward, then, you know, yeah. you're not gonna be there. But there's another aspect to this, which I think is is really important. By the way, you never did like traditional CBTI and sleep restriction, or did you? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Which, which weirdly, I think is actually maybe very helpful for you because what I, what I read uh, when I hear this message from Grace is that um, it's such a common story that somebody has trouble sleeping and then they hear like CBTI is like the best. So I'm going to do this thing called sleep restriction. I'm going to yeah. use this technique, right? This is a technique that I'm going to use. And it's like, I'm going to get up at six. I'm not going to go blah, 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 blah. And then it's really brutal, but finally you start sleeping and then the brain goes, aha, I got it. I figured it out. I can control sleep if I just use this technique. But sure enough, there's this kind of like question of whether like, am I really controlling it or not? What's really going on here? And then there is some hyper arousal and then you don't sleep. And then the brain goes like, dang it, you had control. What's wrong? Like I had this, I had it figured out, but now I am not sleeping. So w is this not going to work at all? And then the problem to me is that you haven't really seen that the reason you slept it wasn't that you forced yourself to stay awake till you were super sleepy. It was because you had kind of some faith in the technique and that led you to a place where like, oh, I don't have to try. The technique is going to do it for me. You let go again. Like you said, you let go. The letting go was what helped. And now you're doing the opposite of letting go. You're trying to find the technique again, and, and et cetera. So that to me is the main uh, teaching point here is that see that it was letting go that led to sleeping well. And then when you kind of, like you said, like look at it as a speed bump, continue doing what you've been doing. I don't respond to it. Sleep will come back, not thanks to sleep restriction technique, but thanks to letting go, right? That's, that is what it is. <laughs> Over again, <laughs> letting go. It's the same, it's always the same. <laughs> Very well. Um, 
So I think that those those are the three questions. I hope everyone felt that they got good answers. And again, um, super glad to hear that you're you know you started your career as a sleep coach, uh, Rucha. How's yeah. how so far? How's the how, how's the feeling? How's it going? Um, it's going. I mean, I'm still building. You know, I'm building the group. Um, you know, just right now on my <laughs> mini my mini vacation. You know, I was in a um. Uh, in my nine to five. So I was working full time. So now I'm just, I can really divert, give more attention to it. So. Oh, really? So you transferred out of a nine to five job and full time. Yeah. 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 I was practicing um, as an occupational therapist. So yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm like, this is my thing. This is, this is it. So super excited. Well, I'll just say thanks for coming on, stay in touch and uh, we'll go from yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.